Hey guys, Desolator Magic here. We're covering the quarter three 2024 Hasbro financial statement. I know that sounds terribly exciting, but trust me, it is. It opens with, if I were to paraphrase the quote from Chris Cox, we made a little bit more money than we thought by licensing our IPs out to other companies who actually know how to make a product that sells. And then they jump right into third quarter highlights. The first highlight, I am not kidding, go download the PDF yourself, is third quarter Hasbro Inc. revenue declined 15%. Now, if you exclude the E1 divestiture, which is something they acquired for billions and then sold off after doing nothing with it, um, revenue declined 9%. Wait, 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 wait. You include the money for selling a thing and your revenue went down. But, oh lord, here we go. The Wizards of the Coast digital gaming segment, guys. The savior of Hasbro. Their own personal piggy bank. Declined 5%. Remember they said, Watsy digital gaming segment. So you might think, oh, D&D on online or D&D beyond, whatever they call it. The thing they acquired and then ruined. Um, and Magic Arena, right? And then MTGO, I guess, technically. But they say it declined 5% due to the lap. I don't know what lap means. I, I, I assume it's a typo of lack in the first sentence, in the first highlight on the first page. Anyway, of Baldur's Gate 3 and consumer products declined 10% behind softer volume. Which, if you read that whole sentence together, you'll notice that it isn't one. I mean, that 30% layoff must have included every copy editor they have. This is amazing. If there's a typo in the first line of the highlights on page one, it's maybe time to put your stock money elsewhere, okay? Not financial advice, that's just an observation that I wanted to point out in my opinion. So they are declaring an operating profit of $302 million and an operating margin of 23.6%. Not too bad, actually. Uh, but that includes $27 million of costs for intangible amortization associated with the E1 uh, divestiture, I guess you would say, and costs associated with the company's transformation. So restructuring, what, like it costs money to fire people or like, I, I don't know, this is, they're making it, they're putting a positive spin on whatever they can, but they're, if that's what they're leading with is those quote unquote highlights, that's pretty bad. So they have an adjusted operating profit of 329. Um, sounds great, but it's 14 million lower than the previous year, uh, quarter three previous year. And they said that was driven by a favorable business mix, supply chain productivity and lowering operating costs. Oh, three positive things drove you to make less money. Are you sure you wanted to put those in the same bullet point, in the same sentence? We made more money than last year. Here's what contributed to that. Three positive things. What? Oh boy, they delivered approximately 87 mil in net cost savings and approximately 177 mil total year to date. Probably by firing 30% of their company. They don't want to say that, but that's... They, they actually don't explain it. It says they're on track for a full year net savings committed. I don't know what that means. I guess... Operating expenses are going to stay down. Tends to happen when you fire people and don't bring them back. Yeah, that is how that works. It's like they're they're releasing this to their stockholders. It's like they're talking to a two-year-old. But that's how smart some of these Wall Street people are. And all these like delusional lefties will only uh, invest in lefty companies. So the total inventory holding, because remember, they wanted to reduce their like toys and stuff and go digital, low margin, less shipping, all that stuff. Uh, it went down 39% versus the prior year. Oh boy. In fact, a 40% decline overall in consumer products inventory versus the third quarter of 2023. Not a bad thing. Really hard to sell. A lot of people are shopping online. A lot of stuff getting flooded in here from China. Thanks, Biden. It is a positive move, but like, if you look past the numbers, you look at what's really going on, what the customers think of them and stuff, especially at Watsy, it just, why would you ever put money into this company? I tried to warn those morons over at, like, what was it, Wolf something Capital? Or, I don't remember what dumb name they had. Had a meeting with them. They totally, like, blew me off. Um, I wasn't too prepared, and I was really tired. But, uh, yeah, they got what they deserved with the stock price down. Oh, let's check. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, Oh, <laughs> Monday, October 21st, 73 bucks a share, give or take. And then the financial statement comes out and it drops uh, pretty much overnight to $66, <laughs> a drop of uh, to this day today, about six to 7%. I was looking at the wrong line, uh, 9%. So rounding error, 10% of their company does whoop, Thanos snapped because they released this report. 
People aren't falling for their bullshit no more, all right? And you know what doesn't sell so good around Christmas? Monopoly Go, MTG Arena, intangible goods, and intellectual property licensing. It's like, hey, Hasbro, what are you planning for Christmas? <laughs> we sold off all of our toys. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Plus, I don't remember the dividend schedule. Um, They uh, promised to pay dividends. And that might have ended in the third quarter. I, I don't know if they did one quarterly for sure. I remember it not covering the whole year. I don't quite remember. Now, they're reporting in this report, which is hilarious, a reported net earnings of $1.59 per diluted share, adjusted net earnings of $1.73, and then their stock price drops like 7 bucks because of this. So that's not good from a pure ratio standpoint. I know that's not quite apples to apples, but like it kind of is. Now, remember all the numbers I just said, okay? They, they have a $300 million operating margin or, or profit uh, so far, which is like a 23% margin, and they paid $98 million, so like one-third of that in cash dividends to shareholders just to get them to not uh, sell their stocks, and that was just from this quarter, so all things being equal, if they were to do one per quarter and it's been three quarters and it was $100 million and they have $300 million in operating uh, profit, they just gave 100% of it to the shareholders, which normally would look good, except some shareholders have a functioning brain and realize that it's basically like not bribery, but like, you know, coercion. I, I don't know what you'd call it. I guess they'd probably say incentive. I, I think it's somewhere in between that. Aha. Uh -huh. A financially unwise desperation move from a company that can't afford that kind of uh, liquid money leaving. So they are saying that the Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming segment uh, decreased 5% as Magic the Gathering was offset by expected declines in licensed and digital gaming due to the launch of Baldur's Gate 3 in the third quarter of 2023. So once again, they're, they're explaining that they lumped those together and that's why it's down. It's down because it was so high before and you can't just have a Baldur's Gate 3 every week, you know? Uh, but Magic the Gathering revenue increased 3% behind growth in the tabletop and arena. I don't believe that both of those are true. I mean, it could still be recovering from COVID, but I just don't see it. I, I, when I hear tabletop, I assume people playing tournaments going to FNM. I think they might just be like, yeah, we released way more secret layers and got it up 3%. Wow. Then they say, now get this, Monopoly Go only, I'm going to add the word only, contributed $30 million in revenue. That was like a billion dollar juggernaut or something, I thought. Um, so $30 mil this quarter? People are done with that manipulative bullshit. Okay, Niantic, Pokemon Go, $8 billion lifetime. The game's been off for about seven years, do the math. 2023, it was still um, $800 million, just over it. That might alone be what sunk their uh, stock price. If I read that, I'd hit sell, sell, sell. Now get this, in Wizards of the Coast, operating profit declined 11% and the operating margin of 44.9%, down 3.1 points due to lower digital licensing revenue. So then they go to, say, the consumer product segment, which I believe is like physical goods. Um, revenue decreased 10%, driven by exited brands. Uh-oh, people ain't working with them no more. Reduced closeouts and softer than anticipated volume. Oh, boy. <laughs> so they're trying to liquidate the remaining inventory that they got and still try to make stuff. But people are like, we're not working with you. You're on the decline for physical goods. We'll go work with anybody else or a smaller company or a less greedy company or somebody with a better... Um, Distribution network and logistics, I don't know. Their operating margin is a mere 14.1%. That's not good. About 4% higher the year before at this point. Uh, the latest Transformers movie was actually pretty good, but it's not performing very well because they drew it in a style that it looks like a kid's movie and then nobody saw it. But it actually is like really good, I've heard, so that sucks. But they said there's growth in Beyblade, really, Transformers and Furby. And it licensed consumer products for My Little Pony. So they license it to other people who actually know how to make a toy or a product and then actually sell it. Wow. Oh, here's the big one. Entertainment segment. <laughs> Revenue declined. 86% impacted by the E1 divestiture. Yep. Absent this impact, oh, they separated it. Trust me, they, they did this totally accurately. Revenue declined 17%, still driven by the timing of the delivery of deals. Oh, yeah, that must be it. Yeah, it's it's just when the Transformers movie came out. It's just, it's, this wasn't quite delivered until after the report came out. All, all of our toys come out in October. 
If they would have just said we're like hoarding crap so we could sell it around Christmas, it would have maybe convinced some people. But I don't think they're even doing that. I think their Christmas quarter is going to look really bad. Oh, wait, this is the entertainment segment. So I guess that does have a really funny release schedule. So, okay, I'll give them that. But uh, operating profit of a mere 10 mil compared to an operating loss of $469 million in the third quarter of 2023. That's right, $469 million. They lost more than they made this year so far last year on entertainment crap and then just sold off E1. So they, they couldn't make a movie or a thing for Netflix or anything that anybody wanted. That's what happens when Hasbro mismanages an acquisition. Um, I think E1 cost like... Uh, t- it was between like two and eight million. I wish I knew. Like I could look it up, but I mean this video is long enough already, and I gotta get it out today. But um, billions. It did not make billions. It lost half a billion last year. Holy crap! No wonder they're selling it. And I bet they sold it to somebody who doesn't even want it and is giving them pennies on the dollar. So if you go year to date instead of just Q3, because that's a better picture, um, revenue did increase for WotC, uh, driven, by, uh, d- driven by growth in the Magic the Gathering segment, and uh, licensing, because they were still making money on Baldur's Gate 3, I guess, and probably a couple other properties. It could just be put Jace's face on a backpack. Like, I don't know. I mean, hard to compare that scale to something like BG3, but yeah, okay. Uh, Monopoly Go this whole year only made $74 million. I mean, only, like, it, it's, you could run that on peanuts, um, and the game's manipulative garbage, so, yay, people are done with manipulative garbage, um, it was in some top 10 charts, uh, I thought somewhat recently, at least this calendar year, so I don't know how that's possible, I mean, they did say profit, it didn't say gross income, so does it just cost that much to maintain the game? My guess is no, I mean, mobile graphic artists overseas and stuff, come on, that, that ain't very expensive. Consumer products, 16% down. Entertainment, 87% down. Their future projection, their 2024 company outlook with a whopping three months left to go, it's probably pretty accurate. For the full year, the company now expects, drum roll please, consumer product segment down 12 to 14%. So they're, they're going to continue the consumer products being down 14%, which I believe is about where it is now, through Christmas. Yeah, I wonder why everybody sold off their stock. Profit margin, all things considered, expected to be about 5%. Ouch. Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming segment revenue down 1%. Yeah. I don't even know what pro forma entertainment is, but that's going to be down 15 million. Okay. Total Hasbro adjusted EBITDA, which is our earnings before IRS takes da a money. Something like that, of nine hundred seventy-five million to one point zero two five billion. Hey, see that's earnings before, and then who cares? A bunch of expenses. It's like unavoidable expenses. It's like well, different government, different law. This goes up, this goes down. Taxes change, that kind of stuff. So it's supposed to be like overall health, independent of uh, expenses that are partially out of your control, sort of. But that's still not good. That billion sounds like a great number. It's not. Not for them. And earnings after you hit all that crap, uh, yeah. Oh, but gross savings target of $750 million cash. I doubt it. Who do you think you are, Apple? <laughs> Hell no. Their capital allocation priorities are to invest in core business, which is corporate speak for, we just gotta keep rolling, boys, and uh, return cash to shareholders through the dividend. That should be number one, because it clearly from a percentage standpoint is their highest priority or their stock would be $10 right now and uh, continue to pay down debt and progress towards leverage target because they're over leveraged right now, which is not what you want to hear. Yeah. Debt to income ratio and, and investment and expansion and like, it's all bad. All the numbers are bad. Here's the part that if you're really wise, you'll catch on to. None of this takes into account rampant inflation. None of it. So I'm not an investment expert. Um, I might have misinterpreted a line or two here, but the general sentiment of this thing is it's really bad. Oh, a couple things I should throw in here. Uh, they're going to pay a quarterly cash dividend of $0.70 cents per share after the shares just dropped $7. So if you're still holding it because of the dividend, you're an idiot. And now nobody has any reason to, uh, to uh, hold it, so... Yep, Hasbro's dying. They don't have a way to get out of this spiral. I don't see anything. They're like, oh, invest in core business, return cash to shareholders, and continue to pay down debt. Wow, what a great 
way to sort of drag along a business. What are you going to do to make more money? What are you going to expand into? What's working? What stopped working and what are you going to replace it with? That's what I want to know. There's nothing too shocking or surprising on their balance sheet that I think they're hiding in what they stated uh, before. So I'm not really going to cover that. There might be some little thing that I'm not catching on to in there that would be interesting, like some kind of real estate going up or down or something. But I think you get the gist of it. They are in every kind of financial trouble. This is the most generic, hey, we're not dead yet and we're paying dividends thing. And finally, finally Wall Street decided, yes, we're done with them. Five years ago, their company share price was $105. It absolutely nosedived in 2020. You could probably guess why. Um, then it grew all the way back up almost to where it was, about 99 bucks in early 2021. And then starting in early 2022, it's just nosedive. It was actually 102 bucks and sank all the way down to $48 in March 2023. Went up, down, up, down, up, down. It's actually in a bit of an upward uh, climb. I don't know why. I guess dividends? People like dividends? I don't know. And now that it just dropped off a cliff a little bit, I mean, my personal expectation is we'll probably see it back in the 50s very shortly. Like, we're talking days. But I'm not a stock guy. I'm not a business guy. I mean, I used to own a business and I kind of amateurly watch stocks, but I'm not currently invested in any. I'm investing in my other business. I think you guys know what that is because uh, you need a big bankroll to pull off the kind of stuff I do. And if you want to watch me do it, go check out my other channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.